This is a masterpiece of engineering this device. Chamberlain and hook hem process timer. Just grab a few shots of the clockwork mechanism in here. This natural daylight. Absolutely amazing. That's the contactor call. You got the selenium rectifier, it still works fine. The driving mechanism. And a transformator. This is the drive train to the indicator, the running time indicator. Here you can see the armature of the motor and spinning 50 hertz. This is stuff is just awesome. That drives this little indicator. Pointer. And this is the process timer, which I'm going to install on our dryer. Because I need one of the other timers and I'll show that in the other part of the video. We're nearly on the event when the black needle touches the point. The actual solenoid will pull in and resets the timer. It disengages the motor from the contacts. These gears here go to the part of the contacts. Um, there's a device in here, um, I'll try to get closer up, hang on standby. There's a metal drum there which contains uh, part of the contacts going to the pointer. I'm nearly ready on the switching point and we'll need to document that. This solenoid is partially energized, it's hard to see. There's a magnetic flux here which only needs a tiny little bit to pull it over to close the contacts and flick it over and then uh, the output is created. It's uh, just the way they design these things, it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. That eccentric moving, that's the reverse running stop. Um, if the motor starts the wrong direction it flicks the motor the other way. Let's see if I can document it. Some stage. This is stuff I love this stuff, this is just made so well. And it will last a time too, of course. I'll see if I can capture the motor start. Unplug. No. Try again. Yeah, dun dun, it will flick flick. Very quick reverse modulation uh, correction on the motor. Sun is nearly going. I get the last bit of the natural light, which is always the best for video. Set that wall, and then we'll see the needle. So it makes contact. There we go. It drops back. I visualize what the contact does. Okay, I'll, I'll de-energize the contact. Click. There we go. Now it's partially engaged, I don't know if it's visible. Trying to do this with one hand pulling the plug in and out. You can hear the click. So really it's already pre-magnetized, so if I get this little click here, it sucks in. So I'll just drop it back out. And there we go. This is just stunning. This device was given to me, it came from a water pump station. And I took the old board out and I put PLCs in there and electronic stuff, so the meter became obsolete. I've got a couple of these, but it's just a beautiful device. 
Well, this is our control device for the dryer, but I need one of these timers. Yeah, I got some in my archives, but I need one of these for the fire station for something and indicate the light. So I have to take that out and put the other process timer in there. So that's our standard dryer, and uh, I'll just show you the process again. We've got a starter on the dryer, and we energize the device. This was going. So the process that's cooling cycles because I had to implement this device here. So it's a 12 volt output here from the transformator into the dryer because the timer died and the new timer was 250 bucks. I told it cost more than the whole bloody machine. So I'll do a quick de energization. Uh, I'll just turn it off. No need to have the thing running at the moment, but yeah, that timer will be implemented in here and I'll take one of these timers out. Just to keep you guys in the loop. I'm a Hoya shot before it's getting dark. Thanks for watching.